There we go. It's as easy as that. Right, hello, quick one for you. We all like to go into the middle of nowhere um, and we've all got bits and pieces whether you take a Bergen uh, with a little power supply for your, your phone. Uh, I know a lot of people, they have like a bit of a base camp, we've got the vehicles and everything. Uh, however, like in our camp, I like to put a charging point on the table for everybody to use and for some lighting through the night. Uh, a lot of the lights you get, they do drain down quite quickly. Um, today's day and age, Everybody's got phones to charge up, tablets to charge up, you name it. We like to not use them, but the great cameras, the great torches, they do everything. So we need to keep them up and running over the weekend, um, as well as no end of other items that also need charging. So I've seen it on no end of um, Facebook groups. I've seen it at no end of shows, things like that, where it's portable battery banks. And I look at it and they're worth what they're asking for them. Um, however, a lot of the price I would say is labour. So if you can't afford the you know, 80 to 200 pound or what have you, uh, and you wanna make it yourself, have a go at yourself, it is a very easy job to do. So as you're fully aware, these are perfect for the job. This is an old baton round ammo box. So uh, you can get any shape, size, whatever you want. This one works for me because the idea I've got is this is a 17 amp hour battery. So similar to a car battery, um, these are for things like fire alarms, intruder alarms, um, any number of things. They're on eBay, uh, they're on Maplin's, uh, but they're extortionate money. Uh, there is a varying price, but again, it's one of them things where there's different brands, different prices. So it's up to your own discretion with that one, which one you want to fork out for. That's not the only size, if you wanted to go smaller, uh, you know, maybe go to something like a bit of belt fed ammo, uh, a case that kind of size, um, or even uh, you don't have to have an ammo case, you could always have a plastic box. Uh, they're called adaptable boxes in the electrical trade. Um, there's lots of other different kind of boxes, uh, names and things, but they're out there. I'll leave it for you to have a look at. Everything you can find on eBay or a specialist. It's not hard to Google. Um, you can get a seven amp hour battery. Um, so this is around double the size uh, capacity of what you would get in your little lithium chargers. So just an idea. That's a few rundowns of the batteries you can have. There's multiple cases you can have, but for this one, 17 amp hour. Um, you could probably go for a 14 amp hour if you wanted, that fit even better. The baton round case, and there's plenty of room in here as well once this is complete, that we can actually put a 12 volt charger in here. So when you get home, you can open it up, pull it out, plug it in the wall, charge it back up again, or you could just keep all your phone leads in here, your lighting in here, everything that you're gonna plug into it on the camp. So endless options and <laughs> endless ideas. So. We'll give you the basic idea and use your own uh, your own ideas from there. So what we're going to do with this one is we've bought the 12 volt cigarette lighter and 12 volt USB chargers. Um, if you type in 12 volt car charging point or anything similar, you're going to get these come up on eBay. This is about seven or eight pounds. There's a varying price whether you want to buy it from the UK, pay a little bit more, it's already here, you get it in a couple of days or wait for three weeks for it to maybe come up from China, where they all come from anyway. Uh, there's no end of different ones of these, but again, adapt it to suit for yourself. Uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back off. There's a little spinning retaining kind of nut on here. And all it does is it's for like the, the units in the back of the Land Rover it's just if you want a nice little fascia for it, but realistically, we don't need that. So, we're going to take this off. And by doing this, what we're going to do is we're only going to need to cut the two circles out for the two items we're going to fit. What I've found uh, is if you don't get your ex measurements exactly per uh, perfect, if you were going to use this, is they don't really want to sit in, there's a bit of a funny angle, things like that. So there we go. All we have to do is bob a hole in here, that goes through. And we're going to do that twice because we've got 
the two different chargers that we want. I'm only ever going to use this one, but it's nice to have options. The other thing we're going to have is an isolator switch, which again, there's a million and one switches. They all switch, just make sure it's a high enough ampage uh, to take what you're actually going to be using it for, so you don't burn the thing out. Okay, the other thing that is essential, I would say, is a fuse. There's multiple different ways of doing it. You can go for uh, a dedicated fuse board, or you can get fuse boxes with switches already attached to. It's never ending. I'm just going to do a little inline fuse. All you do, you choose what fuse you want, you bob it in there, and you attach it in line. If there's any issues, that pops before everything sets on fire, okay? That is important. Right, so what you can see is they, they are quite a large box. Uh, so what you can do is, like I say, you can get the sevens. There's no reason why you couldn't get two seven amp hour batteries there and there and put a plate over the top so you've then still got some storage in here. You've also got quite a lot of storage there too. So that just shows you that the, the, there's so many options out there and it takes nothing to sit there with a tape measure for two minutes. So just to rough this one up so you can get an idea, that's the kind of space with that huge battery. So what I'm tempted to do is there's, there's no saying it's got to be down one side or across the top, what have you, uh, is I'm going to go down one side with the switches and everything here, and then that gives me room all the way along the back that I can drop a charger in there and all my leads and everything that will go with this. So what we're going to do now is, where the little charging ports are going to go, is we're just going to bob the holes in here. You could either do this with a hole saw or you could do this with a cone cutter. All I've done, I'm going to bob a little pilot hole in here, bang the, uh, the cone cutter through, which just extends it to the side that we, size that we need. So nice, nice and easy. Okay, so that fits now, so all we'll do is we'll just file around there, tidy the edge up, put a little bit of paint on it if you're going to be anal with it, but realistically, to me, this is a disposable item that's going to break before it rusts. There we go. So that's your two holes in place now. So they fit nicely. We can get a measurement between the two and then we can look at the switch. Pop that in. Right, so nice and easy. Um, we're going to go for the least used one will be the cigarette lighter type outlet, cigar lighter, whatever you want to call it, 12 volt outlet. So we'll put that in the bottom and it's just a reverse of how we uh, took it out of the little bracket. The next most useful one USB. This is the one that everyone uses these days. Uh, it's, it's 5 volts, so it's, it's wired in such a way where it'll just drop 12 volts down and uh, it goes. These last forever, these things. Even when your battery's near enough flat, it still kicks something out. Okay, so your two charging ports, your two switches. So, next thing, last of all, I'm going to put a little DD light on it. Uh, this is out of a strip light, so it's got three tiny little diodes in here, the little LEDs, uh, and on the end of it, I've snipped one side off, uh, the other side, it's a pod and a neg, so what we're going to do, it's got a little screw hole uh, and a cable, so what we're going to do, put a little hole in, pop the cable through, put the screw straight through, attach it as in. It doesn't give off much light, it's enough to light a table up, and sometimes that's all you need. Or, if you had a power cut in your house, you put this on your landing, you put this on, I think Sam Fruit Cake, he did, uh, he did something similar by putting one of these on an alarm battery, ran his house for days. So, it's one of them ones, this can go just here, we'll pop it through, and it's just enough. Right, 
pop the two cores through, push down, make sure it's nice and even. Use a little self driller on this side. You could rivet this, that would be a nice little finish on it. But again, this is just a, a Saturday afternoon while I'm waiting for something job, so it's one of them ones. I'm going to chuck it together, it gives you the idea of how simple this is. So on this side, obviously, you've got all your cable entries and things. Room to drop your cable down here. We've got room to wire, masses of storage here, okay? Right, so if you're, if you're unsure how to wire these switches, um, they actually make it really easy for you. Uh, you'll see on a lot of modern ones, you'll have two silver pins and a, like a gold pin. The gold pin usually is your neutral or negative, whichever you want to call it. Uh, your two silver pins is your switch, so you'll have a live in and a live out. The easiest way to test this without connecting it up, if you're unsure, if you ever want to check, because obviously different factories in places do things different ways, is pop your meter to continuity onto the beep, test it by touching your two leads together, so that shows you've got a circuit. Bob it in whichever one you think is going to be the first live, touch the second one, nothing, touch the third one, nothing. Flick the switch, touch the first, the, this middle one, beep, second one, nothing. So that there is your switch pair, okay, the two silver ones, so that just proves it. The little gold one, all that's for, it's for this little LED in here. So what that'll do is, that makes its own little circuit, so it just illuminates that little LED. It's not essential, you can have it as a straight through switch, however, it's always nice just to run a little neutral there, and then you've got the wooshy little lights to indicate which switch's on. Right, so the next job now, now we've got everything kind of roughed in place, what we can do is we can, I like to start from the very bottom, work my way back towards the battery. So we're going to start with the uh, cigarette lighter uh, charger output. Then we're going to take the live and the neutral from that. And we're going to go into the USB one. Then we're going to go back up and we're going to work our way all the way back. Okay, so everything's got the power that it needs. Right, so dead straightforward now. Um, basically, all we've got Nice long link with the uh, the lives, so it's just daisy chained along. This is the hardest bit. Remember to put all the crimps on in the order that you want to do them. So all this is going to do is it's just plug and play now. So just plug it all in so that the lives go back to the right places. Simple as that. The neutrals, the only one that's a little bit different, we've done this in two because we've got to incorporate the uh, negative off the little LED light. Okay, so we'll plug that in and I'll show you. So live from the bottom, plug that on, nice snug fit, then to the next one, then the next one is the supply for the 12 volts, the next one is not the supply for the 12 volts, it's actually the switch side because that's going to be the master switch. And then we'll put that out of the way. So the next one down is the neutrals. We'll just push them to one side. So this is the neutral for the cigarette lighter output. Pop that on. Neutral for the USB. Then we've got a, a tail here and a tail here. We also know what the tail for the neutral is down here. A little bit of an awkward one because it's not very long, but if that's the worst we have to deal with today, it's not a bad day. So I'll make these a bit longer, twist them all together, bob them on and crimp it. So there we go, we've got all the wiring in now. So we've got a neutral that runs from the neutral terminal between all the neutrals that we've got on the switches, sockets and light. Then we've got a live that goes from the battery through a little fuse. Uh, it goes to the first switch, which from the first switch it then switches all these items. So. What we've got is we've got the master switch, which turns the two charging ports on and also brings a live to here. This little switch, there we go, little LED. It's not a massive amount, but when it's pitched back in the woods, it's that's going to give you enough light to work around, find your bits and pieces, or if it's just in the boot of your car, you might just find that one tool that you've dropped. So there we go. So this is ideal for people with 
I know, like your discoveries, things like that, you know, where they've not got a full kit out in the back of it, and you can just carry this around. So, just turn that off because it's very bright. And all we've got is I've got a little 12 volt charger. When you get home, you just pop it on charge like so, and there we go. That will just charge up. That charger and everything can fit in this space here. What I'm going to do now is a quick little tidy up is I'm going to put a retaining little bar in here to stop the battery from going this way. I'm going to put a little retaining bar on this side to stop it from going that way. Um, very, very, very easy to do. Just stops it rattling round. So that's it. That, that's as easy as it is. There's nothing much to it. If you wanted, uh, I've seen them with solar controllers, so you could buy a solar panel with a solar controller, so you've got your live and neutral that comes from your solar panel into your charge controller, and you've got a live and neutral that comes from your charge controller into your battery. Uh, they usually come all fused up and everything, so that's how you could also have an off-grid charger on it. Uh, you could put an inverter on it, I've seen them bolted to the side, inside larger ones, uh, a few different options again. That's just another item that's fused and attached to the battery and then you can plug in there. Um, there's, it, it's endless, it's absolutely endless. Anything that you can think of 12 volt that you need, you've got the basics of it. All I can say is make sure your connections are good, make sure you, uh, your fuses are the right size and your cables the right diameter. Um, good rule of thumb is I'll always go a little bit over on the cable so you know I get quite a thick flex. You may lose a little bit of ampage doing it that way, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, the fuses, again, I'd rather go a little bit smaller, so I'd rather blow a fuse every now and again if I was abusing it, rather than it just not blow. Um, it's very easy to find out what these things are. You can look on the ampage of here. So you've got 2.1 amp on one of the five volt chargers. You've got one amp there, so that's gonna be able to supply safely 3.1 amp okay so you could put you know a three point boy 3.5 amp fuse in there that keep that safe you've got another charger down here so you find the rating for that one and you, you could either individually fuse these or fuse them together like i've done because i'm never going to be using both of them um your little light takes absolutely nothing i wouldn't worry about that but again that's tied in with mainline fuse so very easy to do if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, you know, all that stuff, it all helps the channel. Give it a share if you think there's a, a group or anybody else that would be interested in making one of these. Um, I know it's not absolutely perfect, but, you know, you're not buying it from a shop. This is how you can make something on your kitchen table in an hour on a rainy day. So, yeah, it's just to give you food for thought. See, it show you how easy it is. Well, that's a nice little touch. I've just found that I can uh, drop a 7 amp power battery next to the 17 and still get the charger in. So if this went totally flat in the woods, you know that you've still got a little backup battery as well. I mean, 7 amps, not little at all, but, you know, there it is. So I'll put a little retaining bracket in here, one at the bottom, so it can't go anywhere, anywhere anyway. And then the 7, wow, that just pinches it in lovely. There we go.